from what we knew at the beginning of COVID to what we know today, what do we know about the vaccine today that we didn't know while we were all testing it in America, taking it? What have we learned now? What do you mean testing it on America? There were tests before it was released. Nine months is not a long time to test No, but it was it. tested. Yeah, but so he doesn't answer the question here. He just asks him a question about what he means. Pay attention here. From what we knew at the beginning of COVID to what we know today, what do we know about the vaccine today that we didn't know while we were all testing it in America, taking it? What have we learned now? What do you mean testing it on America? There were tests before it was released. Nine months is not a long time to test. No, but it was it. tested. Yeah, but nine months, the average is 30, uh, the average is five to 10 years. I mean, uh, nine months is not uh, enough okay. so you have to, to say, test. No, you have to ask. Hold on. It was tested on in trials, okay? By the way, I'm, I'm not claiming to be the expert on all this. I read all the same things you have, mm -hmm. but I'm a scientist, so I read it as a scientist, okay? There oh, were trials. Geez. That's what the point of phase one, two, three trials are all about. They are tested enough to get data on how to then advise the larger population. Yes, it was tested. For you to say it wasn't tested is it is a gap between your awareness and understanding how things work and what actually happened it was tested he's saying it wasn't fully tested and we know it wasn't fully tested because we had to create operation warp speed and we had to change the laws and push things through faster so that is what patrick is saying here and i think neil is being um disingenuous with this argument if you want it to be tested on millions of people instead of thousands you can put in for that you can say, I don't want this unless it's millions. That's okay. Totally fine with me. Okay. I'm okay with that. that but, but the, but, right. but, but, so, so based on that, do you say, let's keep testing it while the virus keeps spreading? Okay? Right. So this is, this is the contest between the information you have available to you at that moment and what's going on outside the lab. People are dying. Hospitals are becoming overloaded. So. And the question would be, who are they being overloaded with? Are they being overloaded with 19, 20, 25 year old males, 27 year old women? Or are they all elderly and do they have pre existing conditions? Do you say, we have good data on the thousand? It's not yet at a million, in case you wanted a million. Are you going to say, let's still do it on another, let's wait another six months so we get another million in here? Will you do that as a public health no, professional? No, I, I would have said allow the individual to still have a choice that's okay with a thousand instead of a few million. L leave the person have the choice. Not force him to take it or else you're going to get out of the Marines and you've been doing this for 14 years. Not force him to take it or else you have to quit your job there's, as a nurse. There's, there's a public it's health force versus th there's a choice. Th no, no. Um, there's a public health contract that you have signed. No. implicitly as a citizen of a country where in part we depend on each other for health, our wealth, our security, and the like. And that contract is in the best scientific evidence available at the time, if you do not get vaccinated, you will put other people in this organization at risk and that organization does not want to take that risk. So you do not have this job anymore if you decline it. So the debate is between whether or not that was the best scientific data at the time. And if there was data that was being left out, that is the debate. The debate isn't over science isn't real. Science is false. I don't believe in it. The debate was over what was the science. In, with any public health decision, there has to be a consequence to you not participating in that social contract. Is it your job? In some cases it was. But no, we're not gonna have the army bust into your home and force a needle into your shoulder. That's not gonna happen. We pretty much did that. Well, only uh, put your job at risk, yes. Yeah, 67% of Americans took the COVID. That's force, that's not a choice. That's a, that's a lot of force and, and coercing and pushing going on. But let that, me, that's, let, that's the, yeah, we, you, you can't go to the school unless you're uh, vaccinated I think against that's bullshit. mumps. I think that's bullshit. If that's you a different me. country. Yeah. But okay, that, would you want a country? No, America is supposed to be the one that offers the most freedom. That's what America is supposed to be. Yeah, okay, so watch. So, watch. so, it's, so it's, for example, so for example, if you use that argument, so uh, somebody may say, well, freedom of choice, I want to choose what I want to do with the body. You're right. What, you what body? Get to, what body? 
if you want to get an abortion. It's your oh, choice. Oh, your own body. Your own body. Sorry. If you want to uh-huh. get an abortion, get an abortion. If I want mm-hmm. to get the vaccine, I get to choose. So you can't force if, – if I can't force you to get an abortion, you shouldn't be able to force because me to get Because it's the, not about you. It's about people you interact with, and that's the social contract – of public but we health. don't we don't even know if the vaccine worked or not at the time. Yes, that's what the trials are, dude. That's why these trials. What, you, are you missing data out but, there? But let me ask you a question: Are we saying only one type of scientists are right? No, we're saying that the system in place, the sixteen thousand that signed that. No, no, no. The, the system in place to test vaccines. Yeah. Th- th- there's an entire system that's in place. That that with review boards and all of yeah, it, the average that's in place. Now you can say you can ch- you, what you can say is, I I have a better idea than all these review boards and all these agencies and the CDC. I have a better idea. Here's what you should do, and that would have made everything better. Okay, you can put forth. Something that needs to be noted is that just because systems exist, that does not mean that the systems aren't corrupt. It does not mean that the systems aren't wrong and get things wrong. I mean, the war in Vietnam, the uh, war in the Middle East, the idea that just because the system exists, that somehow it's infallible, is completely incorrect. But what I'm saying is, in a case where you can contaminate someone else, it's not about you. It's about the collective You're assuming. health. You're assuming. You're assuming because somebody can take the vaccine... Uh, won't get COVID, which, by the way, I don't need to play the clips for you to see it where everybody said, hey, if you get it, you're not going to get If you take the vaccine, you're not going to get a Rachel Maddow, Joe Biden. I can give you, you Fauci. I can give you fit. And you've seen these clips before. It's not like you've never seen it before. Yeah, yeah. What happened? They was, were wrong. Hold on. So, so, um, the strain evolved, okay, so that the vaccine that prevented you from catching COVID was tuned to the variant of COVID at the time the vaccine was denied, what was designed, okay? Over time, there were variants that... I don't know if that's necessarily true. From my understanding, you can still get sick from the same strain um, of a virus that you were vaccinated for. Vaccinated people can and sometimes do get infected, but a vaccinated person is far less likely to die or become seriously ill than someone whose immune system is unprepared to fight an infection. So nowhere does it say in there that um, it's because the virus changed. Over time, there were variants that arose. The vaccine provided partial protection against the new variants, enough to keep you from dying, statistically, and to basically keep you out of the hospital, allowing other people with more severe problems to get the hospital attention they required. And so, then they would develop a, a subsequent, the booster and a subsequent um, mixture of the vaccine. This is what happens every year with a flu shot. They look at how the flu has evolved from one season to the next. And we have, what's fortunate is Australia tends to get the variant of flu before we do because they get their winter in our summer. And then so we study that, have a forward projection for it. So, that, so these annual flu shots are precisely out of the same idea of how this occurs. How long, how long have those been tested, though? For years. COVID vaccine hasn't been tested for it. It was, a, it was something we just came okay. up with. Let me, let I me, don't know what point you're making, po- other than it was tested. You might Nine prefer, months is not enough. You might prefer... No, yeah. it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of, it's a matter of how many... Yes, time matters, but the number of people is paramount. That's the most important thing. Okay, you don't test it on ten people. You test it on as many people as you can. Sure, I think it was thousands. But is it fair to say that some of the side effects we may not know for five, ten, fifteen, twenty years? Um, We, we, you you can't like they can't say we know one hundred percent the side effects ten years from now. How are you going to know that? Yeah. Okay. So no, of course we can't know. So then all I'm saying is, watch, watch. We can't know that. Okay. But watch. Um, So I have a whole chapter called risk and reward in the book, which is tries to get sensitize people to when they make a decision, what kind of risk are they absorbing relative to what they're rejecting, okay? And we're not very good at that, at probability and statistics or analyzing it. That's why TV commercials trying to sell you a product don't just show you a data, they show a person speaking of the effectiveness of the product, a single person. I lost 50 pounds! The testimony of an individual should be irrelevant to you relative to the entire set of people who have done it. 
and you want to look at those statistics, but we're not good at that. And advertisers know that. So they show the testimony of an individual, which is hugely potent in a civilization where we don't think statistically, we think about eyewitness testimony on something. And somehow that is, is raised to a very high level of influence on our decisions. What I'm saying is, you're not conf the, the, your decision point is not, I'm not going to take the virus because five years, ten years, I don't know what effect it's going to have. May, though, Hold on. Some may not be comfortable. Let me that. finish the sentence. Freud, Freud, Freud what there. I'm saying is, you're not conf the, the, your decision point is not, I'm not going to take the virus because five years, ten years, I don't know what effect it's going to have. Some may not be comfortable. Let me that. finish the sentence. You, you, okay, so you can say, I don't want to take the virus because five or 10 <laughs> years from now, there could be a side effect <laughs> that we don't see. Which is a possibility. Hold on. I, I, I'm trying to make a statistical point sure. here, okay? If you say, I don't want to take the virus because Three. it hasn't been tested for five years and there could be some long-term side effect that worries me, okay? In that same moment, mm -hmm. there's the risk factor of you getting COVID. Sure. Okay? Unvaccinated. 80, at one point, 87% of everyone dying in the hospital of COVID was unvaccinated. Okay. So your risk choice is, I'm not going to take it because maybe somewhere down the line something will happen and we don't know what that is, or I will risk getting COVID. And if I get COVID, depending on your age and other things, there's a 3% chance of me dying in the hospital. That's your choice. Yes. Yes. But what I see people doing is they focus on one thing, and that's the foundation of their decision, but rather than the other chance. And what happens if you get COVID? Now you get long COVID. Now you don't have a taste buds for, for two years or whatever it is for long COVID. Yeah. Um, you're on a ventilator in the hospital, possibly dying. Like, what? where is the... So I looked every day, when I, once a week, I looked at the statistics. Mm -hmm. How many people are getting COVID? What's the rate? What's the rate of hospitalization? What's the rate of deaths? Where is it by state? I had to look at it. I, my, where, my board forced me to look. We're in the business. As we have to they look should, yeah, of course. because it's data yeah, on, I agree. on risk factors. The, the risk of people's lives, okay, for so, sure. So nothing is ever zero risk. Yeah, there's a risk that you'll grow a third arm in 10 years because the virus mutates within you. Should, what, should, nobody has said that something as radical as growing a third arm is going to happen long term. So he's just belittling the idea that something bad could happen in the future. It's not cool. It's a, it's a social contract in a modern civilization I don't have for the, public health. I don't have the right to contaminate someone else. In What do you mean? Like Workplace says, we don't want you coming in unless you are vaccinated and you might lose your job. I would say, why? Oh, because you could contaminate someone else introducing a problem in their own health profile. That's the public contract. That's why workers wash their hands in the restaurant bathrooms by law. Yes, they're required to do so because you don't want poop germs in your dinner that they're preparing because our evidence showed that that's one of the greatest places you can spread disease is in a restaurant with a central kitchen. It's a good point he's making here. However, Louis Pasteur in the late, or no, the like early or no mid 1850, somewhere around there, in the mid 1800s, who came up with germ theory, he um, there was a lot of pushback from the medical establishment. So the idea that uh, that the doctors were bringing in the germs to the patients was something that the system rejected, and it wasn't something that he was able to convince them of in nine months' time. You want a world where you can do whatever you want and have it influence other people. I'm not saying that. I, you kind of are. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is the following. Like, okay, for example, statistics. Uh, you know, have you seen the documentary Died Suddenly? Have you looked no, at it? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Well, um, it's where, an interesting it? one. It, it, it's on, it's on uh, I don't know where it's at. You can find it I'll somewhere online. It. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's got 30 million views. I think it's worth watching. Actually, would be curious to know what you say about it once you watch it. Mm -hmm. The statistic then showed, like, pre COVID, you know, 29 people, athletes in Europe died suddenly from heart failure pre-COVID, pre-taking the mRNA vaccine, okay? Post-taking the mRNA vaccine last year, 1,500 people suddenly had heart failures in Europe and two-thirds died. That's documented. That's not like it's a hypothetical, right? Okay, you read statistics like that, then one has the right to say— well, just, to be just to be just to be sure. careful, 
You have to be careful how you speak information. So, so <laughs> you are describing two events, okay? You're, you're describing events that had a temporal relationship. Correlation mm -hmm. okay? versus causation. Before you've established a causal relationship. Just be clear. What Neil is saying here is basically that this was the tail end of COVID. COVID was spreading out throughout the population, so we can't necessarily distinguish between are these effects, these heart failures, from the fact that COVID is being spread throughout the population, or is it the vaccine? Or is it both? Or is it neither? If, uh, if somebody all of a sudden starts having a breakout, okay? A breakout of what? Meaning their skin starts breaking yeah, out. Uh -huh. You're 26 years old. Mm -hmm. You never had a breakout. All of a sudden you start breaking out. And the doctor says, listen, man, what have you been doing differently? Well, listen, for the first time in my life, six weeks ago, I started doing DECA mm -hmm. steroids. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. That's why it you're... It, it, yeah, implicates it implicates it, it right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, if somebody all of a sudden, you know, is having a hard time sleeping at night, I'm, man, I'm having a very hard time. So let's watch your diet. Well, then they notice at 1030 at night, you're having iced tea and, you know, lemonade. And you added with this. Well, listen, if we've been doing it for six weeks, that's why you have an hard time. Just drop that. Don't drink that after two o'clock. I'm just making, you know, saying. But all I'm saying is what I want to know is I want to put everything on the table mm -hmm. versus saying, no, no, no. There's one thing we can't put on the table. And that's the cause of the vaccine. There is a, no way there could be any negative impact because of the vaccine. That's no, ludicrous. No one has ever said that ever about any vaccine. Oh, if you say that, then the question then becomes back for you to right. say, when, when COVID first got started, I invited so many doctors to come in to talk about COVID. And then I invited people good, from both sides. I want both sides. Mm -hmm. I invited people from both sides. You know which side would never come? The side that was for vaccine would never, ever come because they thought they were above the average person that they know and the rest of us are dumb. So because of that, they're not willing to come and sit down with scientists. I think that's arrogant. So to me, when I ask you scientific debate, I'm not telling you. I'm, I'm a scientist. Hey, let me debate with you because I'm smarter than you. I'm not a scientist. I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm a business let, guy. Let's, let's do a hypothetical uh, scenario. Hypothetics are um, let's assume an actual cause and effect has been get, get, has been established okay. in these in sure. this case, sure. which it's not, I have to see this film to know. I'll I don't, send it I don't to know you. that it, there's yeah. a cause and effect other He's than not a in time relative to other things mm -hmm. that people might have been mm -hmm. doing. By the way, alcohol consumption went up during COVID significantly, okay? And alcohol is implicated in heart disease. So Depression, anxiety, okay. yeah, well, people staying at home, kids, the opioid addicts, okay. addiction. Okay. So those staying at home wasn't the best uh, no, decision either. What I'm saying yeah. is... If after the vaccine is available, more people die of heart failure over a time where alcohol consumption went up, as did depression. That could be an option. That's, yeah. it, it, uh, that's right. That's a very good point. That, that's that's all I'm saying here. But let's give it to you that the vaccine caused this. Let's just say that. Okay? Yeah. And add it all up, and you get, what was it, 1,500 post-vaccine? 29 to 1,500. Oh. 20, oh, 29, 29 deaths. Oh, 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 sports sorry, deaths. Yeah. Thousands of deaths, yeah. let's say. Okay? Let's say 10,000. Even let's just do that. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you can estimate how many deaths the vaccine saved during COVID. Okay, because you can look at the death numbers drop off as people got vaccinated. It's in the tens of millions. At the same time, though, the Omicron variant was spreading throughout the population at lightning speed. And the Omicron variant is the most transmissible one of all the other variants, but the severity of the disease is comparatively lower, as the Omicron variant has mutations that led to higher transmissibility and better immune escape. The combined mutations are responsible for Omicron's dominance over the other variants. So my theory is, and again, this is my hypothesis, is that this was created to mass vaccinate people, basically undermine the pharmaceutical companies because um, you can imagine in poor countries that didn't have access to the vaccine that they went hey what's the easiest way to spread this oh the same way that the virus is being spread it's much easier to do that than to put the vaccine in a vial and inject it into the person also there's a paper on omicron that shows that the variant mutations came out of nowhere that there was no other mutations leading up to it that just boom popped out of the sudden all of a sudden out of nowhere as if it was manufactured this is just my hypothesis again but it seems like nobody ever talks about it uh do i not want to die from covid at this rate that a 
occurred in mm -hmm. this world? Mm -hmm. Or do I not want to die from this complication from the vaccine itself, yeah. the, the heart failure? So make your decision. And so you'll say, I might be in that 1500, so I'm not going to think. Then you get COVID and die from COVID, right? The, so you just make the decision. But you know what I would say to that? But you know what I would say to that? What would you say? Here's what I would say to that. I would say, perfect. Let me take the risk. And thank you for giving it to me that way as, versus telling as, me it's one or the other, which is how it was as presented. As long you are informed fully about what the risks are. But like I said, as a species, we're not very good at thinking statistically about it. We're just not. And when we want to, we believe we're going to be the exception. And look at the people betting on lotteries. You know, they think they're going to win. But but, but for me, but for me, like, you know, uh, when the moment they started uh, saying you have to put on cigarettes, this, the risk of this, the risk of heart failure, cancer, this, this, that. And if you still want to smoke cigarettes, guess what? You, you got a risk if you smoke cigarettes. You may get lung cancer, right? Hey, if you eat this, if you do this, if you do that. Yeah, but we've denied your admission to the bar. There's a cost to that because it's a public health issue. And so, right. You are free to smoke the cigarette, but not in my establishment, by law. I actually disagree with this, the Indoor Clean Air Act. I think that if you wanted to open up a bar that's a smokers-only bar, then you should be allowed to do that. If I want people to come into my house and smoke, they can do that, right? Because I own the house. Now, if I own a business and I own the building, then I should also be allowed to do that. Now, let's not forget the landlords aren't going to want the establishment to be a smoking establishment because it's going to lead to smell. It's going to cause uh, the smoke will get into the ceiling paint and that'll have to be repainted and stripped. And so, yeah, there's, and it'll get into the ventilation. And so it does undermine the property values of the buildings. So again, these things could end up being self-regulated away anyways. All I'm telling you, but well, you can debate whether you should still be able to work and put other workers at risk for not having vac vaccinated. That's a, you can debate that. Yeah. In the context of public health, that's a risk factor that we don't want to introduce to other people because of your decisions. That's a public health issue. It's been going on basically for a hundred and something years since, you know, the, uh, the, the, what's the, who's the woman who, uh, some famous medical case, a person who spread, uh, uh, what's it? Typhoid Mary. Uh, what, what is that? case recently uh, no no 100 years ago oh it, it created a whole wave of, of sanitation about. rules and things for public health sake I'm not familiar. Uh, but anyway the, the, the point is it's i want to make sure you know you can focus on the 1500 people who died after the vaccine mary mallon um, you're talking about the history of typhoid fever? Yeah, typhoid. Yeah. Typhoid Mary. Yes, yeah, thank you. Typhoid thank you. Mary. Okay. Yeah. okay. I didn't know her last name. Yeah. I, I thought typhoid was her first name. <laughs> typhoid Mary. Mary. <laughs> okay. wait, wait. So, yeah. uh, so it's simply a matter of if you're saying you don't want to be in the 2000, whatever the number is, who died after the vaccine from heart failure at the peak of your physical career, not totally necessarily factoring in all the other abuses that went on over that time that may have contributed to it. Instead, you want to take the risk of COVID and not be one of the 20 million people who would have died and didn't, right? So, so I just want you to have the statistics in front of you. And it seems to me most people would, in most cases, choose the path that reduces their chance of death. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you haven't liked the video, please go ahead and do that. Subscribe to the channel. Um, this uh, debate was a little longer. I left a bunch of parts out. So if you want to go check it out, go check it out. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.